exercise is absolutely a good thing. Everyone should exercise, but you can have too much of a good thing and exercising too much is actually a lot like being chased by a grizzly bear. What's up? I'm Melanie Ash from MelanieAshFitness.com. I'm a personal trainer, a fitness nutrition specialist, a weight management specialist, and a women's wellness enthusiast. And today I want to talk about stress and exercise. Why too much exercise is a bad thing and how you can look at it as over-exercising compared to being chased by a grizzly bear. Bear with me, no pun intended. So first of all, let's talk about stress. Exercise is a form of stress for your body and stress can be a good thing. A little bit of stress is a good thing for the body. Too much stress is a bad thing for the body and that's because when our body responds to stress, we are able to, if we can meet that stress and overcome it, we are able to become better, stronger, and more capable of handling stress the next time it comes around. When we run into problems is if we are chronically stressed and our body is never allowed to meet those stress demands, recover, come back down, reset, and become better prepared to handle the stress. So let's talk about how exercise is like being chased by a grizzly bear. So I want you to imagine that you're in the woods hiking and you come upon a grizzly bear. You obviously are going to be stressed by this and you're probably going to run and you get away from that grizzly bear. So this is just like going into the gym and working out. You take on a hard workout and you finish the hard workout. It's what happens next that is so absolutely important. In the first example, you get away from the grizzly bear. You're able to get to the road, you flag down help, someone picks you up and takes you to the hospital, you're a little scraped up, maybe you have some cuts and bruises from running into things and you're sore because you just ran for your life. However, you're taken to the hospital, you're patched up, you can rest, you get some food, some fluids, and in a few days you're much better and you're alive. Let's Compare this to a workout. So you go into the gym, you have a super tough workout. When you're done, you're sore, you're tired. You go home, you eat a really good, healthy, nutrient-dense, nutritious meal. You have some water and hopefully you take it easy, you get a great night's sleep and maybe the next day you're really sore and tight but you don't do another crazy hard workout. You do some walking and you let your body recover you're feeling good. In this example, the next time, say you're out in the woods, it's been a few weeks or months, and you see another grizzly bear. You've already gotten away from the grizzly bear once, so you know you can do it again. So you do the same thing, you run, you're stronger, you're recovered, you're feeling good, and you get away from that grizzly bear again. And this time, Maybe you're not so beaten up because you knew what to expect and you knew how to get away and it wasn't quite as scary of an experience because you've already done it before. Think about that with your workout. So you had that hard workout, you gave yourself some time to recover, it's been a day or so, you go back into the gym and you hit another hard workout and this time it's not as hard or it's not as scary and you're able to do things and you're a little bit stronger. And over time, as you continue that cycle, challenge, stress, recover, replenish, meet the challenge again. Over time, as long as you're allowing yourself that recovery period, you get better, you get stronger, you get more equipped to handle the stress and you're not quite so scared of seeing that grizzly bear because you know that you are able to get away. Now let's look at it in terms of what happens if you don't allow yourself that recovery? You see a grizzly bear in the woods, excuse me, in the woods, and you run, but you don't find the road. And you're lost in the woods, and you're scraped up, and you're sore, and you're tired, and you start to get really hungry, but there's no food, and there's no water, and you're drained, and it gets cold, and man, you're really not feeling very good, and you're not in a very good place to be able to escape that grizzly bear. 
Just like if you do a super hard workout, you're sore, you're tired, you don't eat maybe what you should, you don't replenish, especially if you get done with your hard workout and you think, I don't want to eat because I don't want to gain any weight. So you're not eating what you should be eating. You're not replenishing your fluids. You're only sleeping four hours a night. And then you get up the next morning at 5 a.m. and you tell yourself, I'm going to go to the gym even though I'm exhausted. I feel like crap. My body aches. I'm going to go to the gym and pound myself into the ground again because this is what's going to work for me to lose weight. And that workout sucks and you feel like crap. And you don't feel better or stronger. And the next day, even though you feel just as bad, you do it again. Go back to the woods where you're not feeling good, you haven't replenished, you haven't recovered, and you hear that bear and that bear is coming. <laughs> and that bear is getting closer. But you don't have the energy to run. You haven't gotten that rest and recovery. So what's going to happen? That bear is going to get you. And the same thing is happening with over exercising. You're going to break your body down. You're not going to be able to be better prepared the next time you go into the gym or the next time you face that grizzly bear. And eventually, you're not going to get eaten by a grizzly bear, but you are going to get injured. You might get sick. You're probably going to not feel great. You're probably not going to look great. And your body's not going to respond to the stimulus that you're giving it in the gym because you're not allowing it to replenish, rest, repair, and recover. The body is built to handle stress, but it's only built to handle so much stress at a time. And then it needs to be able to meet the challenge, it needs to be able to come back down, it needs those stress hormones to come back down, it needs to feel like, okay, I got this, I can survive, and the next time I face that grizzly bear, or I am challenged, I am better equipped, stronger, and ready for it. If you are exercising to extreme exhaustion every day, if you are sleeping four hours a night, if you are really stressed out from your job or your life situation, and you're like at level eight, nine, ten of stress all the time, you are not going to lose weight. Your body is really going to be in a place where it's going to feel like it's threatened and it's very survival. It hears that bear out there in the woods and it doesn't think that it will be able to fight that bear off when that bear finds you. You've got to allow yourself rest, recovery, and replenishment so that every time you meet the stress in the gym or in the woods, you are able to face it. It's one of the biggest mistakes I see women make is trying to do too much, too hard, too intensely, not allowing themselves enough rest and recovery. If you are going to get up in the morning and go work out and you're getting less than six hours of sleep, skip the workout, get the sleep. I promise you it will benefit you more. So I want you to ask yourself, especially after you get done working out maybe today, if I had to fight the grizzly bear, would I be able to do it? And do I want to be able to take on that bear tomorrow? What does my body need in order to be able to do that? I hope that analogy helped. I think often we don't think of exercise. It can be a stress reliever, but we don't think of it as an, a stress stimulus on the body, and it absolutely is. And we want to add that stress, but we want it to be a good stress and not a bad stress. If you are looking for some guidance with your healthy eating or your workout program, I have a seven day challenge that I would love to invite you to. It is completely free. It is seven days in which I'm challenging you to follow a healthy, clean eating meal plan. I give you all the recipes, the grocery list, and complete prep instructions to show you how to make all of your meals for the entire week from home so that you can stay on track and eat clean for seven days. And it's a seven day workout program with full workout videos with me so you get to work out with me in real time. And uh, it's a great time. It allows for plenty of recovery time. So it is realistic. You get those workouts in, done in uh, less than 30 minutes. There isn't one workout that takes more than 30 minutes. So I challenge you to see how easy and fast being healthy and working out can be with my seven day kickstart challenge. You could start today or sign up and start next Monday. Completely up to you. 
We have a great Facebook group for accountability as well, where you can ask me questions. I will be chatting with you guys live once a week. So be sure to check that out. I will put a link here in the video. If you're watching live, you can find it on my page, Melanie Ash Fitness, in the cover photo. I challenge you to be healthy and fit for seven days and see how easy it can be. And it doesn't require you spending all day in the kitchen or all day in the gym. Make it a great Monday. And remember, you don't want to get eaten by that grizzly bear. So be sure you're allowing yourself enough rest and recovery and your workouts are a source of stress relief and not just stress. Take care.